Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of From Nothing, Tam's Story. Now, we are basically going to skip to the next day, after what happened last time in Sagona's free agency. Today is Friday, as you awaken early in the morning, the day is yours. Uh, at what point do I need to go to class? Uh, class usually begins at 7 in the morning. Okay. Is it possible for me to wake up out of excitement, for me to wake up an hour early? Can I do, like, a save or something to wake up a little early? You can just choose to do that. Cool. I, awesome. I can choose to do that. Great. Tam is going to wake up extra early in the morning and be buzzing with excitement because he finally has enough to afford this sword and is very nervous that the Air Genasi that was there, you know, several weeks ago in town is not there anymore. So he is going to get up, get dressed in his... He's going to... Uh, very specifically do his um, uh, his armor proficiency routine because uh, even that he has he has a he has a schedule he likes to have homework so he does his like tumbling exercises that um, taught that uh, Sagona taught him uh, after which he tries to like make sure that he has enough time to make his way into town so he can get the sword first thing okay um, go ahead and roll me a con save Okay. Ooh, that's good. <clears throat> 20. <clears throat> Normally, you wake up at about 6 in the morning to go and get yourself breakfast, get yourself ready to go, and go to class. Today, you're waking up at 5 in the morning because you want to go purchase the Soul Singer. Yes. Okay. With a dirty 20, you manage to wake up without hurting yourself. <laughs> um, you are conscious, you are in control of yourself, and as you leave your room, um, it is early enough that the armored patrols that basically marched the halls of the Merry Guard Academy are still out and about. Um, as you emerge out into the front of the Merry Guard, you see there that Persh is just getting himself ready for the day. He has just... It looks like he's not at the desk yet. You see he is opening drawers and shoving things in them. And he glances up as you're approaching, and he says, oh, Good morning, Tam. Morning, morning, Persh. I'm going to go get something from town, and then I'll be back for class. That's, I didn't ask. Uh, go on, then. Okay, bye. Have a good day. Uh, Persh kind of grumbles as he climbs up onto his stool as you head out into Ferrum. Tam is a lot in the morning. Yes. Yes, he is. As you head out into Ferrum, early morning in the Ferrum, in the Ferrum, excuse me, early morning in the city of Ferrum is, well, busy. There's lots of fishermen that are being pulled into and getting themselves ready to handle the imports and exports that go through Ferrum and every day the logs that are cut down outside the rain road are hauled to the docks and even as you're leaving the Marigot Academy this early in the morning you can hear the sounds of horses on cobble road and the, the strange sound of logs being dragged over cobblestone um, it's That's not fine. a sound that you're too accustomed to hearing but it is what's happening right now Occasionally, there is an extremely loud dunk of logs getting tumbled out of a mill, uh, having just been pruned of all their branches and bark, and these bare wood, basically timbers, are just thrown onto the ground and dragged down to the boats. Um, you don't see them, but you hear them as they echo throughout the entire city. Cam will slow down and listen to that, and sort of like his music brain will be working. There is a rhythmic sense to it, as every yeah. few moments another log is and then dragged with this heavy over cobblestones. Um, that is what you experience as you emerge out into the city of Ferrum. He's uh, a He's not it. There is also the occasional extremely late drunk, just basically, uh, you see one of them is seated on the street opposite the Merry Guard. Um, the Merry Guard is closed at the moment, as it is like 5.15 in the morning. Um, but you see there is an individual, like a kind of greasy-looking, very tired, black-haired uh, man, 
seated on the ground with a bottle and a brown bag. Uh, looks like they're half asleep. Tam will wave cheerfully. I don't think they notice you. Yeah, that's fair. You will continue after waving cheerfully. Okay. So where are you headed? Uh, so what's it? What a good question. I should have taken better notes on this. I think. I'm pretty sure it was, they were, it was uh, Sagona, I think the South, I can't remember if it was the South Docks or the High Docks, but I think it was the South Docks um, where Sagona and Tam, because Sam, uh, it was on, I can't remember which chapter it was, but it was on one of the free agencies. His first free agency was Sagona where he found this guy. Mm -mm. So he's definitely heading to the docks, but I cannot remember which docks. It was, so, it was definitely the South Docks. Um, Okay. The high docks are mostly dry docks, or they are um, specifically for import-export, and you have not been been over there much. Okay, great. Then it was a south dock. Definitely, we were meeting a ship, and also it was, like, nearby where the ship stool was, so that's where he'll go. Look for this air genasi. Roll me investigation. It will not occur to him until he is halfway there that, like, maybe the Air Genasi, it's early for them. Uh, it w- truly will not occur to him, but he will try anyway. Okay. 18. Roll me a D100. Amazing. Come on, high numbers. 65. 65. You're searching for a good 45 minutes. And oh, the mar- no. the market outside the South Docks is being set up. Um, early hauls of fish are being set out on these large iced racks. Um, they don't stink yet, so it's only kind of a fresh smell. Um, the bakeries outside the market are, are in high industry. As you smell fresh baked loaves richly filling the air all around you. Um, The smells of early morning ferrum are very pleasant. Um, That being said, as you're searching, you go through the market, you go up by the south docks, and as you're going through the alleys, you almost feel like you should give up hope after a while, when suddenly, from around a corner, as you're peeking around an alley, you hear, looking for someone, and it's a familiar voice. I think I'm looking for you! As you whip around, you see there is an Air Genasi seated behind a vendor. Roll me an Arcana check real quick. Okay. Uh, Oh my god. I know where this is. Eight. The individual that's looking at you is blue-skinned with fine white hair. And he seats, he's seated behind the vendor stall, and he's looking at you with this magnanimous expression of benevolence. He has a smile on his face as he regards you, and he says, I remember you. You do? I've been thinking about you and about that sword for many weeks. Do you still have it? Well, of course I do. Do you have, uh, just out of curiosity, you only had the one item, right? You, You still only have the one sword? That is correct. Just this Uh, rapier. You said a thousand gold, right? That is the standing price for the salt singer. I have it. I have a thousand gold. You've saved up and done well. Might I see it? Yeah. He will take out... I I mean, it's probably very heavy. He's just like, it's all in... I don't know. I don't know how much of it they gave gave it to us in platinum of our pay and stuff like that. He just is pulling the gold out. I think he probably has it kind of neatly stacked. (laughs) And then okay. in a, in a bag. Uh, you see this individual uh, peers down at the gold and you see he kind of counts it with his fingertips and he says, Ah, oh, yes, yes, this all seems to be here. Hmm. Well, if you're here to do business, the soul singer is yours. Oh my god. Do, um, is there anything else that I should know about it? so I can care for it properly? It's very like a... sharp. Okay, it's very sharp. Is there a specific kind of, like, oil or anything that it needs? Mineral oils or linseed oil will keep it looking shiny. Uh, but as a magical item, it won't ever really rust on you. Oh. 
It is yours. Is it? Is it there on the? Um, is it there that you can just pick up? Yep, it's just sitting on the front of the cart, and you see it is, as described before, a very ornately handled and hilted mother of pearl and set into the grip rapier. Um, looks like it was finely crafted. And the iron of the blade is a little bit darker than you'd expect from just a, a, a steel sword. Um, it almost looks as though it is patterned in Damascus style. He you pick it up? Is, yep, he picks it up, is fully enchanted by it in the same fashion as he was before. Um, ah, no, don't forget, don't forget. And he picks up and he sets on the counter a scabbard, which fits it. Oh, amazing. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. This is a sword that can play the fiddle. I love it so much. The soul singer can do many things. Some of them shall be revealed to you immediately, and some of them in time. Really? Of course. Like, will you reveal it, or will the sword reveal it? You'll have to learn them as you become accustomed to it. Wow. So, in Thank your inventory... Yes. Add a plus one rapier. Okay. But it requires attunement. Sure, sure. Oh, so I because I don't know what it what all it does yet. So. Correct. You just know that as you're using it for now, it is a plus one rapier. Amazing. I shall add a plus one rapier. And can I make it? Can I make a note for it to require attunement, or can I just? Just remember that for now, uh, because D and D Beyond was not cooperating with me on this. Yeah. He's not attuned to anything else right now, so it's fine yeah. for this moment. Amazing! Yay! Uh, he picks it up and holds it in his hands reverently and beams uh, at the air and says, "Can can I know your name? Thank you for selling this to me." I am called Lothwell. That's a great name. And it has been my pleasure. Now, until we meet again. Suddenly, he turns in a tight circle, and the entire vendor stand seems to vanish into the air with him, and he is gone. Tam is enchanted. <laughs> okay. You have the soul singer. I have the soul singer. Um, he's gonna immediately forget that it took him 45 minutes he would get here and he's probably going to run late and absolutely going to miss breakfast and he is going to uh, it took you 45 in. minutes to find the fellow to find it's, it's, it's not 45 minutes from the academy that's fair so he may, maybe he won't be late uh, but he's absolutely going to immediately play a song with it because he's excited um, so love your performance with advantage happy happy real uh, very very excited to have this sword. Oh, that is a natural 19. And eight. Let's take the 19. Yeah. So, the Soul Singer Rapier, as you draw it across the fiddle, it's just as you recall, the blade seems to catch on the strings as any of the finest bows might. And it it's a unique sound. It almost as though it reverbs through the blade and back through the fiddle itself. Making the music that you're playing almost have its own unique acoustics. And it is beautiful sounding love this he's he's very excited um and he looks at the sword as you rolled a 27 what did you play real quick uh tamlin his signature his like his uh happy little tamlin reel then you would hear after you've played it and you did such a fine performance in your mind, you'd hear a feminine voice say, Oh, yes, that will do. Hello? Hello? Are you the bard? The legendary bard that's in this sword that uh, the dragon told me about? That was a lot. Um, I suppose yes is the answer. I'm a bard too, but I don't have any legends. My name is Tam. I did gather you were a bard, yes. That was a mighty fine performance. Um, Thanks. Certainly suitable enough. I look forward to hearing more. I love being suitable enough. Uh, do you? Can I ask your name? Soul Singer. Oh, you're okay. So wait, hang on. 
Is that, is that the name of the the bard or the sword or both? So the bard is named after the sword. No, the sword is named after the bard. Slow down. I was called Soul Singer. Have been for many, many generations. It was my surname, and I don't recall the rest of it, but it will certainly do for now. Can you teach me songs, maybe? I know a few. I would love to learn songs from you. How many bards can learn songs from their swords? That's well, at least one. At least one? Me! Wow! Thank now, you for... we've only just met, so please slow down. Yeah, you certainly sorry. have a lot of energy about you. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I do. Um, yes. Just breathe. Focus. Mm -hmm. And perhaps if we get to know each other a little better, I'll be more willing to show you a few things. I would love that. Um, yes. I very specifically breathe. <laughs> Thank you. I would enjoy that very much. Now we have to get to class. Class? Uh, do you know uh, what the Marigard Academy is in Ferrum? Um, no, but based on the context and what you've said already, I imagine that's where we're going. I'm training to be a mercenary in the Bard program. I see. Well, we'd better hurry then. Uh-huh. Also, oh, don't, man. don't leave me out in the open. People will be concerned if you're walking around with a sword in your hand. I'll put you in your scabbard, is that okay? Well, yes, it's, it's quite comfortable. Okay, good, good, good. I'm glad it's comfortable. He'll put it in the scabbard and skitter. Okay. Very whistling all the way. Um, you hurry your way back to the academy. Go ahead. Um, so this, you're going to be close to cutting it late. I'm going to roll. Sure, sure. Okay, you do manage to make it in time, but only just. And unfortunately, okay. breakfast is out of the question. That's fair. Uh, as you make it, you head straight to the bard classroom. He bursts in, it just like a beaming, beaming with energy. Um, you see, Nore and Yitron are both there. They've already been settled well into their seats. Um, Nore has a one of those a music stand with parchment open on it, and you see that she is writing on it, likely composing something. And Yithron looks at you and says, Good morning! Guidance for him, per usual, uh, very, very excitedly. <laughs> Thank you! What is you so upper today? I just got the thing that I've been saving for, for, for many, many weeks. And it's great! What is it? Is this rapier? Look, 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 look! Uh, he takes it out of the scabbard and holds it very reverently. Uh, Yitron looks at it, and he says, Whoa! I have not seen anything like this before! Isn't it pretty? It's magical! Can I touch? Yeah! Uh, he picks it up, and you see his eyes widen. Oh, right? hello! Okay. Oh, maybe I should have asked her if it was okay that I, I, I have other people. It's okay. I think it's okay because you're a bard. You see Yitron is, like, listening to two people at once, and he, like, looks at you, and... I, um... <laughs> no, I use an axe. Okay. And after a brief pause, he, like, holds the sword out to you and says, She seems very nice. Isn't she great? I did not think it would talk to me. Sorry, I probably should have warned you. I didn't think it was going to talk to me either. Uh, Nore, from over your shoulder, you hear her say, So you've got a sentient weapon then? Uh-huh. And Air Genos was selling it in the market for a thousand gold, which I feel like is not very much. Uh, so I don't know what was going on there. Maybe be yeah. a, you you see Nore like narrows her eyes at you and she says, Maybe be a little careful. 
about... You were sold a sentient weapon for a thousand gold? Well, so I was a little worried about that, and then I asked Tabernacle, and Tabernacle was like, Air Genasi are capricious sometimes, and they just kind of, you know, want to give the thing to the right person, I guess. But yeah, it was a little weird. I've met a lot of Air Genasi in my time, and they never gave out magic items like they were, well, a thousand gold is still a lot of gold, but for a sentient weapon, that's... You see Nore is, like, looking over her music stand at you, and she says, Do you mind if I see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nore... You know, you know everything about swords. Well, uh, not everything, but, you know, you know more about swords than I do. Nore yeah. takes it, and as she holds it, she grasps it by the hilt. Hello there. Uh, and she, like, is holding it up in the air and, like, looking down the blade's length, and uh, you see that she kind of does a quick swish with it through the air. Yes, you're very finely balanced. Um, why are you... Okay. You see, she's, like, having... listening to the sword talking to her. And then Nori <laughs> looks at you... Are you sure it was an air genasi? That's, I mean, I had, I had Tabernacle um, look in my memory and that's what he said. You think it was from the elemental plane of air? I'm gonna have Nori roll something real quick. Fucking natural 20. Nori looks at you and she says, but, uh, are you sure it wasn't a djinn? Oh, um, may maybe, maybe he was a djinn. The fuck. And she, like, takes the sword by the blade and hands you the hilt. Um, okay. Consider yourself lucky, is all I'm gonna say. You think, so you think it's okay? Uh, I think it's probably fine. Did you meet, Air do you know things about Jin? I've heard stories, um, there's djinn that have come down to the Drake Shores and granted wishes for people. Um, they're, they're usually benevolent, but they're mysterious. This one was definitely mysterious. He only had one item on his cart, and he would only sell it to, like, I felt, I, it was unclear why, you know, someone didn't buy it before, because, you know, it seems like a steal, um, so I was afraid it wouldn't be there. And then I found him today, and then... The cart disappeared. Nore is staring at you. Tam, this doesn't sound a little bit suspicious to you. I mean, well, yeah, I was gonna have, I was gonna have Tabernacle check it out, check it out too, but you know, it's um, a class time now. Okay. It is class time now. You're right. Um. I look when I saw it, and I look. I saw it. You can ask Sagona. We were at the docks, and we saw this thing, and there was a sword. And then I could, I could, I can play my fiddle with it. Isn't that cool? I can play my fiddle with this sword. And I wasn't gonna buy it or anything because I didn't have a thousand gold. And then he said he would hold it for me if I was able to come back in a certain time. And then I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. And so Sagona and me, we went to talk to Tabernacle about it. And then Tabernacle looked in my thoughts and said it was okay. So, all right, I, I guess all right, all right, slow down, slow down. Okay, I get what you're saying. Um, just for safety's sake, maybe, um, maybe see if Widget can see if that's cursed or something. Oh, okay, okay. You know the artificer instructor? Yeah, I met her one time. She doesn't like to be touched. She, no, she doesn't. Um, you see, Nora does not look surprised that you know that. Yeah. Um, it is at this moment that Tally steps into the room. Tally! Good morning! Good morning. How the fuck are all my bards doing this morning? Real good. Good. Because I have good news for all of you. What is the good news? It is time to choose your schools. He's gonna look 
you're gonna look at Nor uh, Nori. You already did that though, right? You're, you're, you, you had your blade made in. Is that your school, right? Nori just looks confused. And Tally says, shut up and listen up. Okay, sorry. As you learn more magic, and as you grow as a bard and a minstrel and an entertainer of all sorts, you have to choose a college of what you focus on. Nore, I have a suspicion as to what you're going to take. But, and you see that she, uh, like, w turns and she flips a stand around, and you see that there are a number of tomes on them. Each one with a, with, in really crystal clear lettering, College of Valor, College of Lore, College of Swords, College of Shadows, all the various different bard schools. As you learn your magic and as you grow, the influences you take your music from, that is your college. So, and this is where you choose your level three focus, yeah. basically, in character. You watch as Nore is the first one, and no surprise, she picks up the College of Swords. Yithron goes next, and you see he picks up the College of Valor. And then, Tally looks at you, Tam. So, Tam, what's your focus to be? Do I have to have one? Yes. Okay. Um. Well, can my for can my focus be like ballads and stories? Of course. Okay, which one is that? She reaches over and plucks the College of Lore tome off of the stand and hands it to you. This is where, well, this is the college that focuses on blending music into all sorts of stories. You'll yes, be the envy of sorcerers, wizards, and clerics everywhere. Really? Well, you'll be able to steal some of their magic. Okay, maybe not the stealing, but yeah, okay, good. Good, yes. No, you'll be stealing it. I steal it? Really? Not directly, but yeah. Okay. I mean, do I there, have to... She, like, taps the book in your hands, and she says, There are secrets in this book as to how you play your music that will let you control the weave as a wizard might. Or draw divine energy as a cleric might. Really? Really. But don't overdo okay. it! Okay. Or you'll hurt yourself. Okay. And she, like, taps you on the nose and says, I knew you'd pick this one. Did you? Of course. Was it that obvious? Yes. <laughs> now start reading. Start okay. reading and learning all of you. And she op pulls open a flask and takes a drink. <laughs> Tally, do you want to meet my sword while um, I'm reading? She I got puts, a sword today. She puts the flask down and looks at you and says, What? <laughs> do I want to meet your sword? Is this a threat? No, 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 no. Pull the sword out. Remember I told you that I, I found the oh, sword? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was like a month ago. All right. Um, Steven. She reaches down and she plucks the sword from your fingertips. And she like... <laughs> Like, dashes it through the air and says, That's a mighty fine. Oh. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. Yes. Oh, he's been mighty fine. Well enough. Oh. All right, then. And he, she hands the sword back to you. He didn't tell me it was sentient. I, well, that's what I was saying. She, she talks. I see. You were speaking quite literally. Uh-huh. All right. Well, that's fantastic. I know. Um, How much did that cost you, did you say? I, no one believes me. It was a thousand gold because of a gin. I believe you. I'm just worried. Um... After class today, uh, maybe go talk to Tabernacle or Widget and have them give it a once-over. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yep, 
Oh, yep. Uh, Nori told me to do that, too. I'm going to do that. Good. Now, in the meantime, raid. Okay. So, this is where, as you've hit level three, you would choose yeah. the focuses for your lore bard, etc., etc. Which is what you so, do today. That's what you're that's what doing, I'm doing today. Day. So, I actually, I thought about this really, really hard. Um, and the, the lore, you get three extra proficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought about those and sort of like what the ones are that, not just the ones that like Tam wants, but the ones that Tam has like kind of canonically been like working on. Um, perception is the obvious one because uh, he's close with Sagona and she's really good at that, but also Hana, like that, you know, this is a thing that he, he still is working on that alert feat, but like, Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. As you've hit level three, you've earned the mm -hmm. alert fee. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing. Uh, so he also, uh, so he, ha he has, um, so he has kind of perception. He wants to be better at looking for things and kind of seeing things from different angles. Um, he from watching Skulna, um, and trying to like, he's not very you know good at. He can't do it the way she can, but he's learning stealth from Skulna and um, history from just being interested in the world around him sure um and then the expertises are obviously for tam for performance from just practice and persuasion from yeah also <laughs> yeah um also your shiny new rapier will make a lot of this practice easier uh, you find yourself able to practice for longer without getting tired um which is helpful very helpful. You do also find that the rapier does comment sometimes when your practice goes poorly. <laughs> does she have any like feedback that I can work on? Um, mostly she says things like, your angles are all wrong. You should be focusing more <laughs> on individual strings instead of where your wrist is. Or like, yeah. you're pressing too hard on with your other hand. You're going to hurt yourself. We will Play the instrument, not manhandle it. This is perfect. Please help us. <laughs> <laughs> we will work hard to earn the approval of the sword. Okay. Um, as I've said before, because of the Soul Singer's nature, uh, you basically you do not have to unequip it to play songs. You can just play them off the cuff, fiddle in one hand, sword in the other. Um. Yep. There is more to the sword, and as you as you attune to it, which you do do over the course of the day, um, you learn that the sword can be channeled to regain a bardic inspiration. Ooh, that's amazing. Um, you also can spend a bardic inspiration when you make an attack with a rapier to add your bardic inspiration die to an attack's roll and damage. Whoa. That's exciting. That's awesome. Um, you also realize as you grow, so will this rapier. That's exciting. He's he this is the best day. This is the best day Tam Tam has had in a long time. And he's uh which is it makes it a little difficult to to read because he's never been good at that, but he's he's fidgeting happily in his chair. So, because you're now level 3 and you do become a lore bard, there, you can't really fail the roll to yeah. read and sure. learn how to be this kind of bard. Um, as you've been practicing towards this kind of bard the whole time. Um, yeah. So, I can't really ask you to roll like a intelligence or wisdom to do this, but we'll say, roll me a wisdom check to just see how focused you are and how, you know, concentrated you are during the day. <laughs> Look there. Oh, that was almost. Oh my gosh, that is a twenty, actually. It's a natural twenty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you manage, despite your excitement about this rape here and what its potential holds for you. You realize this is your future, and you focus. You take it seriously, and at four o'clock in the evening, runs around. You feel good about the decision you made. I think this is the first time in his life that Tam actually, in like, it was easy to read a book for a long period of time. Um, 
like like so much of the magos stuff is sort of like let's read dry tomes like not like it's not necessarily for the stories it's more for the magic right. it's a different kind of reading and this is different and i don't think he really realized that like i can like reading actually <laughs> Yeah, like this book was written by bards for bards, so it was like telling you, you can find the most interesting stories of anywhere, just sit down and listen to what other people are speaking about. And if you yeah. tie them into your own adventures, no one has to know, you... <laughs> uh, oh. it's, it's an easy thing to read. Love that for him. Uh, once Tally dismisses us, uh, he'll look over at Nori and say, okay, look, you probably have lots of stuff to do, um, you can come with me if you want to see what's going on with this sword if you're interested, but you know I can. I'll let you know later if you prefer. Roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, Nori looks at you and she kind of like tilts her head and she says, "Like you said, I do have things I'm trying to accomplish." Okay. So. Oh, well, at some point, doesn't have to be today, but do you want to have that um, sword practice we were talking about, that sparring sometime? Yes, I do want to do okay. that. Cool, good. Just not awesome. tonight. I do have things going on. You, you have stuff to do. You have stuff to do. Hey, congratulations on your new college, too. Thanks. Fits you. She kind of smiles at you, and she says, I think so, too. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, you too. Um, he's gonna flutter up to go see Widget. Okay. It should be also noted that his um, mood orb has been just like a brilliant blue this whole day. Noted. <laughs> um, as you head into the Artificer's Workshop, uh, it is, as always, the sounds of machinery and chemicals being poured and simmering it smells acrid in here. Um, sure. you, see, you see Taunus over at one of the tables, and as the door opens that you enter, she looks up and just... Hello, Tom. Very um, excited wave. <laughs> um, you see that the other fellow who's up here, uh, a red-haired artificer who's working at another table, Sean, um, glances up as well, uh, but then the beaker he was working with nearly falls over, and he... Oh, 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 kind of focuses on what he's doing um, the halfling instructor turns and looks at you uh, her dark brown hair is shortly cut and she like the goggles on her head almost wobble as she turns and says yes Widget um, if you have a minute would you mind looking at this new sword that I got today new sword um, you see that she like turns a knob on something and you hear a and she says, yes, I have a minute now. Um, let's see it. It is, um, it's, uh, he'll, he'll draw it out and say, um, well, it's a legendary sword that I got for a thousand gold from an air gin, and everyone is convinced that it's cursed. So, um, you, it would be good to you, know that it's not, hopefully. A legendary sword uh -huh. for a thousand gold. Uh-huh, everyone, yeah, I know. It, All right, let's weird. see it. And she approaches, and she picks up, like, a pair of pliers off the table. And you see these pliers have, like, leather pads on the teeth. Um, and as you hold the rapier up, she, like, plucks it out of your hand with the pliers. She holds it up, inspecting the rapier. I'm going to uh, roll for her. One minute. Tam fidgets and realizes that she pro he probably should have asked the sword beforehand and is now kicking himself for not just asking the sword whether it was cursed. Uh, you see as widgets like this this blue pain into her in front of her eye and she inspects it very closely. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. She draws a parchment and as she releases the pliers they remain floating in the air in front of her as she pulls out a pen and begins writing on the parchment and she looks up at it again uh, inscribing something um, and then she takes her glove off and she touches the hilt of the sword and you hear her say, yes, yes, hello mm -hmm. nope, I am not one of them sorry to disappoint you 
tell me. Do you remember anything beyond two centuries? Fair enough. Right. She takes her finger off of the sword, um, goes back to her notes, and then she, like, suddenly, without warning, reaches into her pocket and pulls out a small pouch of blue banasite powder. And you only know that's what it is because blue powder suddenly up over the sword. And as she inspects it, the powder turns all sorts of different colors. You see it turns green and white and silver and almost glowing in different shades of that of, of a violet that's not super harsh. It's a very pale violet. Finally, she grabs the pliers again and holds the sword out to you. Your blade is the soul singer. Yes. Not, not cursed. Sentient. Uh, created 273 years ago in the Altar Spire. Um, are you aware of what that is? Uh-uh. In Deva Major, far east, eastern Aurelia, this is a legendary weapon. It was created using the soul of one bard. Name is not known, unfortunately. That being said, when it was created, it was originally designed to be, well, a sort of heroes. Uh, the original wielder long since perished. Swords passed through many different places. It has become dormant. Is there a reason that this particular Ergen wanted, like, a student to have it and not someone like Tally? I have no idea. Hmm. Jin's motivations are up to them. Typically, they can be of benevolence, or at least unusual motivations. But what? I could only hazard a guess. What would, what's the guess? It wants to toy with you later in your life. A toy with me? Mm-hmm. You, um. well, I... Only charging you a thousand gold for a legendary weapon, I imagine this djinn at some point later in your life will appear, remind you of such a low cost for such a powerful item, and then use that as leverage to get you to do something that it wants you to do. Oh. Cam's yeah, ears drew. I didn't realize it was like a, a contract kind of situation. Well, it wasn't. Uh, you are of a benevolent nature. You see, you can be easily guilt-tripped into things. Well, yeah. And this dude I mean, is likely counting on that. It if, isn't if a truly contract, though. If he wanted me to do something, like, that made sense and was good for the world, then, yeah, sure, I would do that. It likely would be a thing good for the djinn. Oh. Thing, well, uh, the sort of thing only a mortal can do, which usually can be, uh, skep you know, a bit skeptical or sketchy at best. Well, I guess I'll have to cross that bridge when I get to it. Yes. Yes, you will. As the blade is dormant, it will have to grow within the attunement of a wielder, in this case, yourself. As it grows more and more powerful and it awakens, perhaps the djinn will be uh, aware of this. And that's when it will appear. Do you think maybe that the djinn uh, isn't a bard himself? Otherwise he would have used it like that? I imagine, because... Jin are technically not mortal creatures. They cannot allow a magical item to attune to them in a way that will allow it to grow. Oh. Do you understand attunement? Do I understand? I'm trained in Arcana. Do I understand attunement? You can roll can an Arcana roll? check. I feel like 20. Seems like something that you might know from cleric nonsense. Okay. Uh, so... Mechanically, you understand that attunement is your soul's ability to align itself with a magical item. Sure. So, yeah. Widget would then say, well, in this case, as you attune to a legendary item that grows with you, you're sharing space among your soul for the soul within the weapon. Really? Yes. And a djinn does not have 
the capability of this. Huh. So it's kind of like... It's kind of like how... I met a wizard once that had... Well, not one, like recently, a couple days ago. And she had a familiar that was, like, attached to her soul. Kind of like that. So I yes. guess lots of stuff can be attached. Uh, well, not lots of things. Um, you are limited by how much your soul can handle. Um, everyone's soul is slightly different, but everyone has a fairly similar fortitude. One of the things I teach my students here in the Artificer Classroom, how to compartmentalize your soul to attune to more than just a few things at once. Wow. That's really cool. It's rigorous and difficult, but yes, it is extremely useful. Yeah, sounds like it. Huh. Well, thank you, Widget. This is really exciting, and I'm glad to know that it's not cursed. You are welcome. Uh, be careful. While it may not be cursed, I do not believe you got it with no strings attached, even if you didn't know what they were. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That is a very gin thing to do. That makes sense. Well, um, I guess I'll have to study up on gins then. Uh, good and luck. Oh, it, or is it not hard to study gins? They are eccentric and varied. Hmm. Well, it's maybe not... I'll ask Tal if he knows anything. That is a good idea. He would be mm -hmm. more versed in the magical creatures than I would be. I, it is not my area of expertise. Okay. Thanks, Widget. I really appreciate your expertise that you do have. You're welcome. Will that be all? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Very well. Off you go. Bye, Tannis. Tannis waves you? at you again. Are you gonna? Are you staying late? No, I think I have maybe an hour. Okay. Well, I got some new books on Celestial. I'm working really hard. Oh, I'm sure you'll grasp it before you know it. I hope so. And then Widget, like, nudges you and says, off you go, off you go. We have work to do. Uh, as you are ushered out of the room, the door <laughs> shuts behind you. His ears droop a little bit. <laughs> uh, um, and that is when you find yourself back in the halls of the Marigard Academy. Okay. 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 Um, he is going to touch the sword and say, I'm sorry, uh, is it okay that I handed you over to so many people? It must be um, stressful for you. It was a little alarming, but I've been passed around before. That's there's nothing new. Okay. Well, uh, I Perhaps think I'm a just a warning a, in the future. Yeah, yes. Sorry about that. I'm I'm getting used to um, having a, another kind of item voice in my head. It's new. I imagine so. Also. You don't have to speak out loud. I can hear your thoughts if you direct them to me. Really? I can't really. think hard at her. <laughs> Less you... Ow. You don't have to focus so hard. It's loud. Okay. I'm gonna get used to it. Um, I'm sure you will. I'm sorry that everybody doesn't believe me about this, but I think I have a better sense. In of, the circumstance, I don't blame them. Yeah. Um... Can I ask, do you know what kind of bard you were? What your college was? Was that a thing 200 years ago? If, of course it was a thing. It's always been a thing. Um, I was a college of valor. I, my friend, Ethrin picked that today. Well, maybe he has good taste. I think he does. He, he really, really does. He's, he's very good. Um, I'm College of Lore. I hope that's okay. Oh, that is fine. We are going to be writing many complex songs then. Yeah, I actually feel kind of inspired. I was going to go compose a little bit. Um, you want to help me compose a little bit? Of course. When would I ever okay. say no to such a thing? Amazing. Um, he will go... Is, there's dinner, right? He'll go down and, yes. and eat dinner. Um, and will eat it really fast and then run to his room because okay. he's inspired. Uh, all right. You you scarf down dinner, uh, which, hold on. Uh, you gain five temporary hit points. Um, dinner is simple but tasty. 
uh, pasta with various vegetables and a pesto sauce as you eat it and then you scurry on up to your room um, what are you composing? Uh, I am composing I have a real I have a real life song um, but I'm composing a song that is based on uh, our it, it, it maybe not based on but so much but is inspired by our adventure with the hag I think he's this is a thing that he's been working on for a while um, it's it's mostly inspired by Sagona he's writing it actually for Sagona um, but he didn't really have the kind of final piece of it and now he feels like after the adventure of the hag with the hag he has the final piece of it Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll me a performance. At advantage, as you have aid from the Soul Singer. Oh my god, 20! Okay. 28. As you're working on it, and your natural talent for the notes, and just the, the language of the music itself shows through, you hear the Soul Singer say, I will say, you're off to a better start than a lot of other bands I've worked with. Really? They have quite a bit of potential. Thanks. That's really nice. I, um... I wasn't really trained to be a bard until I came here. So, that's well, good to know. What were you before? Uh, well, I was supposed to be a cleric. I see. My family... my family is all clerics. A cleric of... I'm sorry. Mago. Magos. When I was out and about, before I volunteered to, well, become a weapon, no one had heard from any of the gods for quite a long time, so I don't know any of them. Oh, that's right. 200 years ago. That was the War of the Dead, right? Uh, okay. Yes, so it the was. gods came back. They came back. Do you know that? Did you know that they came back? I've gathered that. Um, hundred years, about a hundred years ago, they came back. So still pretty new. Um, my dad was alive then, and was pretty young, but was you know alive, and it it had a, a big impression. Magos had a big impression on him. They all fell out of the sky um, in this like comet thing. Um, yes, I was at the Battle of Great Fort. I saw many undead souls be slain by Croesus himself. Oh, so, okay. I know yeah. that one. I know him. Because yeah. everyone said, oh my gosh, that's Croesus. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Magos is the magic. This is the one about magic. Magic? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. I feel like I've missed something. Uh, so, there's a whole bunch of gods. They all kind of cover different areas. Right, um, but you grew but up studying the god of magic, and now you're a bard. Well, yeah. Really, my dad... My dad and my mom are both, and my sister, are both clerics with kind of a focus on magic. Divine magic, but, like, a, especially a focus on, like, the weave and kind of wizardy stuff. And are they here? Um, no. Uh, no, they're at home in K.O. Coda City. Um, and then, that's not close, is it? Uh -uh. Um, I kind of told them that I was going to come here and be a cleric. Um, and I was maybe not being very truthful. I see. And I'm sure that bothers you. Well, I told my sister, I told her the truth, and she hasn't written back to me. And now there's, a, like... A conflict at the border and there might be a war and they're probably going to be fine and safe because they don't live you know they live kind of inland they're, they're probably going to be fine but I'm worried that maybe my sister doesn't want to talk to me anymore and my dad is really mad and I don't know is your family the sort to demand you behave a certain way there's there's a lot of expectation around um, being taking over the temple and stuff. I see. Well, I mean, if they were aware of your natural talents of music, I don't see why they would try to pigeonhole you into their family business. I don't know. Well, it's complicated. Is it? One of us. It feels like it's complicated. It seems very simple to me. 
But I'm just a sword. <laughs> you're a bard. You're a legendary bard. You're only a, you're, and also you're a pretty great sword. Anyway. No, I'm a rapier. It, yes, that's true. You should, <laughs> that's that's funny. You're funny. You're funny, rapier. I well, bard, as you said. I have a lot of um, finesse. There you are. <laughs> that's rolling with the punches. So, or staff, or are we going to deal with this problem? Um, I'm not really sure how. I wrote to my sister. She hasn't written me back. Well, you said there's a war going on, did you not? Well, yeah. I don't know if it's totally a war yet. Uh, it seems like no one's quite wanting to declare it. Uh, but I would like to find out about what's going on and help if I can. Well, it was really are, scary. I what found are we waiting out, for? What are we... Okay. Um, okay. Well, here's what we can do. We can go to work. Um, I what? have um, a... I... What do you... I have a side job. Okay. Uh... I, I work for... I work for, um, uh, a visitor. Um, oh. and that's how I found out... That's how I found out that there was a war. Because... And it was really scary because we knew... I, I knew about it before, like, the Marigard Spy Network knew about it. And... They're really good, so that was weird. Um, but uh, I learned from the soldiers that kind of what's going on at the border, and they probably need me, uh, so I should probably go do that. Okay, I'm sorry to have distracted you from your composition. We'll find out more. It's, it's okay, it's okay. I'll finish this off, um, and then we can go play it for the person that inspired it. Oh, that's always nice. This Sagona you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps they will definitely appreciate the amount of forethought you put into this song. So she's really right. She actually is a cleric, is studying to be a cleric, and should be a cleric. Of, and, of uh, Magos, you said? No, not of Magos. Of Nier. See how the, the lyrics have some Nier? I play? see, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nearly hard to see. <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't quite as good as my other ones, but I'll, I'm out of practice. It's together. I haven't had anybody to speak to for quite a while. That must be difficult. I would have trouble not being able to talk for a oh, while. It's, it's, you know, life is a sword. It's, time is... Basically, time is just passing. So. It's hard to track, I bet. Mm -hmm. It mostly feels mm -hmm. like sleeping until someone speaks to me. Or I'm in someone's hand. It's good to know. Okay, well, um, would you mind? I have I have a suspicion that my my boss um, at the at the physiker, um, he knows a lot about forging things and, and making weapons too. Would you mind if um, I showed him to you too, uh, or showed you other? I understand what you mean, and sure, I don't mind. Okay, this time I warn you. This time, I promise. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Remember, put me away. Yep, he will put put him in put Soul Singer in the scabbard. Okay. And <laughs> run off to Caesarek. Okay, you run to the physicers. Goodness, all over the place today. Um, as yep. you arrive at the physicery, where is your? There you are. Um, it is busy. Yeah, uh, and as yeah. you enter, Zurich looks at you and he says. Ah, Tam, I was actually, I was just preparing a message for you. Um, oh, you don't? No, I'm right here. Good, I was going to say I needed your help, um, as you could see. And you see there are a number of individuals that need tending to. Some of them are soldiers. Soldiers, Aurelian Guard soldiers, Golden Cloaks. And as they are various stages of being bandaged and such, Zurich turns to you and he kind of ushers you close and he says uh, if I recall you mentioned your family is of Kota City, Kale that's right, yeah um, I may have some bad news oh uh, no what kind of bad news? there is now an embargo between Aurelia and Kale and there are what? no there are no messages being passed between the nations I believe war will be declared in the next few days, so 
So no letters? Nothing. No trade, no imports, no exports. Nothing's getting through. Even um, magic messages, or not so much? I mean, there's only so much they can do about sending spells and such, but um, no animal messengers, no flying couriers, nothing. nothing. Very scary. Yes. Um, I had a letter that I wrote that I guess I, I can't send now. Okay. Well, is there conflict there? In, in Kale? Do uh, you know? I know that there have been skirmishes at the border. I know that they are getting worse. Um, I know that we are getting more and more casualties in every day. Uh, there is a window ship that has been traveling between our our port and that of Shorewatch and, co and um, the Elvenlock Pass every day, just ferrying and wounded and back. It's really scary. This is unfortunately a reality of war, and <laughs> it's a sort of thing we haven't seen in over a decade around here, but so it is. We shall deal with it. Well, if there's anything I can do short of helping you, let me know. Well, immediately, I could really use your aid here. I have many yeah. people to attend to. I've got it. I got lots. I got all my spells. I can help you with curing people magically, but I know that's not your thing, but I have lots and lots of them. Um... No, I'm not going to turn it down this time. Those three over there require immediate attention, so please cure them. I got it. Yep, I got it. So you are going to have a busy evening here. Yep. Um, um, can I use can I use my sword to get a bardic inspiration back and have six bardic inspirations that I give yes. tonight? Yes, cool. you can. Or five, I guess it would be five. Uh, so you basically you 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 touch Soul Singer, and you ask it for the energy to inspire. Yep. And Soul Singer provides. And she, I am focused and was not. I was like all ready to be like my sword. I have a cool set. Nope. She, he's like, nope, nope, nope. We're going to focus. Too busy. It is Too crammed busy. in here. Yeah. Uh, it is rare to see Annika, uh, Zurich's partner, out and also helping him tend to patients, but she is. And you see that there are a few people that are of Ferrum itself that have been almost like set to the side and they're patiently waiting to be seen as all of these soldiers are fresh off the boat and just in the midst of being patched up. Um, yeah. You count a lot of wounds dealt by bludgeoning weapons. Crush wounds, which are brutal and difficult to heal. Um, so, let me know exactly what resources you're expending. Uh, I mean, I have, I'm good to go, I have everything. So I will give, I'll, I'll give all my bardics, that's five bardics, and all my spell slots. Okay. Um, the the difficulty with my cure wounds is that it's it's my spell I get for free for the cleric initiate, mm -hmm. and it's only plus two. It's a D8 plus two because my wisdom isn't very high. Um, but I can do healing word also, and that has plus. That's with my charisma. So that's a plus um, four. Or... Four, yeah. But it's only a D4 plus four. So it's either a D4 plus four or a D8 plus two. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, healing word will have a higher minimum, but cure wounds yeah. will have a higher maximum. Right. So it's kind I of up to you. I think I think probably healing. Honestly, for Tam, it makes more sense. Healing word makes. I, I can cast cure wounds for free, um, which I will do uh, once. But my all my I think all my slots will be healing word. Okay, that's fair. Go ahead and roll me the heals. Okay. Oh, and actually, hang on. Let me hit the long rest button because I forgot to do that. Yep. Go ahead. Um. Okay. So cure wounds. That's pretty good. That's seven. That is pretty good. Healing word one is only five. Two is also five. Three is six. Um, another six. And then my level twos. Okay. Are uh, nine. And then actually, I can offer to enhance ability on Zurich if that helps also. Uh, Zurich would nod and say, oh, I could definitely use the aid. Um, um. And he would ask cool. for wisdom. Awesome. He will do that. Okay. I believe that's Owl's wisdom or whatever. 
Cowl's wisdom. I accidentally rolled it rolled for temp HP, but that's not what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry about that. That's just how D and D Beyond always reads enhance ability because it's the only thing you roll is the temp HP. Um, you'll give him, and then also all of his bardics. Okay. Also, roll me performance. Perform. Uh, can I use my rapier? Can I get advantage? Yes. Okay, seventeen and twenty-four. All right, roll me a d100. Uh, Forty-two. It is an exhausting night. Yeah. You are here in the clinic working until close to ten thirty in the evening. It is long and just brutal. How a lot of these wounds that you're seeing are difficult to patch up. They are just the sort of wounds that you can't. Like, you're not a surgeon, so you don't know how to really tend to these injuries, and it's all waiting on Zurich and helping him deal with these brutal injuries. Um, there's a lot of splint making, which Annika is handling, and you, your performances and bardic inspirations are shared between the two of them as they are one by one handling each of these patients that are pretty brutally injured. Uh, and your magic will certainly help. Once they're splinted, uh, that is when Zurich like, points to you to healing word or cure, uh, to set the bones properly and get them healing in the right way. By the end of the night, it's, you, while well, you don't, you have a point of exhaustion, I will say that. Sure. <laughs> You've that been busting sense. your ass for five hours straight of just trying to get, like, you're sweating it's been hard work. And finally, as the last patient is set into a bed and they're tucked in and as comfortable as they can be, Zurek turns to you and he just says, That was a long day. It was a long day. Well done, Tam. Um, this would have been miserable without your aid. Um, oh. I haven't had a course of triage that difficult in quite a while. I fear, I fear I must be out of practice. Well, you know, it's kind of good to be. I think it is maybe good to be out of practice with triage, because that means that terrible things aren't happening all the time. That is a good point. Well said. What is that? Is that new? Uh, yeah, I have a new sword. Um, it has... It's legendary, even. Oh? Uh-huh. We had the artificer at school look at it. She says it's not cursed. Um, it does talk, though, so you know, be aware if you want to hold it. Her. I, I would be say. happy to. Her name is Soulsinger. Soulsinger. <laughs> I would be happy to appraise Lady Soulsinger, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll hand, hand her over. Zurich accepts the rapier, and as he ex inspects it, he says, Oh my. You are beautiful, aren't you? Mm hmm. Uh, it, is a, it is a pleasure to meet you. I am Zurich Silver. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. I am afraid I am taken, but thank you for the offer. <laughs> you charmer! Um, as Zurich appraises the rapier and he's like inspecting it and holding it out, he does say, This is a mighty fine magical item. Beautiful, right? Truly. Um, Widget says that I probably owe something to this um, air gin that gave it to me for not very much money. And she's probably right about that, but she, he probably won't come back to talk to me until later. Um, but I'm going to deal with that later. I'm excited to have the sword now. Blasted extra planar beings always trying to get a one-up on us all. I understand. It, I, didn't think, I didn't think about it. I mean, well, actually, it's not true. I did think about it. I went and I told my teachers and everything. But I didn't think about it this way. But now I have a really cool sword, so that's good. You have a remarkable sword, indeed. And I imagine Soul Singer here will do her best to ensure that you survive and grow comfortably. And he will yeah. hold the blade out to you. Help Thank first. you. She's a great teacher so far. It's only been a day. So. Lot of wisdom held within a magical item. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Do you have any? I bet you do, because, you know, you were an adventurer for a while. I have a few. You make them too, right? Yes. Or not? My personal favorite is Garuda here. And What's he that? gestures, and suddenly a hollow wrought iron bird flies up out of his pocket and up onto his shoulder. Oh my god! You have a familiar! The bird looks just like a, a small dove, but it's black. It's made of wrought iron. You can see straight through it. It turns and looks at you, and you see that its eyes are two pure blue crystals. This is Garuda. She's my... Well, I made her when I was a lad. Um, but she's been with me through all sorts of trouble. <laughs> That's amazing. Did she talk to you too? No. <laughs> nothing nothing of the sort. She's, she is simply a homunculus, but I like to think that she understands me and, you know, I, and if I'm not talking to her, then I'm just talking to myself, and that's madness. <laughs> I understand. Sometimes it's not madness because you're talking to your sword, but I've learned to do that in my head so I don't freak other people out. I'm still not quite used to that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, he kind of reaches up and he... You watch as he, like, strokes a finger across the back of this wrought iron dove, and the dove reacts as if it's a real bird, like nuzzling oh. its head up against his fingertips. That's and so he says, I didn't teach this thing to do that. I, you see, I, it's, it's confusing how realistic magic can make things. But, well, and then Garuda flies back down and crawls back into his pocket. That's so cute. Wow, you're such a, I, you know, I think maybe, I think of you so much as a healer sometimes that I forget that you, you also make things. Of course. I mean, my darling Annika here is the, the, the head of our crafting side of things. Um, I should tell her I'm trying to learn to use um, medium armor now. I'm not very good at it, but I'm working on it. Uh, Annika, who's like over by the workbenches, leans over and she says, Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, do you have some? Yeah, they gave me some some to try at the Marigard. It's just kind of, you know, like the starter breastplate that you get. Um, but once I'm, I'm good and ready and good at it, I know where I'm coming to ask to get a new, new breastplate made. Well, I'll tell you what. For all your thanks. Well, for thanks for all your hard work. Once you get it down, come by and I'll get you set up with something nice and maybe with an infusion or two in. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. It's the right way to thank someone for helping. <laughs> I'm happy to help. Especially now. My gosh, you need all hands on deck. You're not wrong about that. And you see Zurich like, brushes his head, like the sweat from his brow, and he says, Anyway, um, I imagine you likely want to go relax after such a long day, so... A little bit, yeah. Uh, you too. Oh, yes. I'm going to have a bath. <laughs> okay, well, I will. it's Saturday tomorrow, so I should be free. I'll come help if you need Perfect. Uh, don't forget, um, I'm sure you know, the Fall Festival is this Sunday. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and right. I will be helping the city with some preparations for the event. Did you know? I, you know, there are going to be some mirrors, and uh, my friend Tannis and I, you would like her. She's an artificer, too. Um... She, we helped um, negotiate the mirrors that they're going to have for the Fall Festival. Oh, the scrying mirrors? Mm hmm Well done. Yes, that's yeah, always, that's riveting. The artificers at the Academy are, are infusing them so they don't break um, with magical, uh, unless, unless, like, magical stuff happens. Ah, good thinking. Yes, that will, that will definitely save some money all around, I imagine. That's the hope. Well... Until then, Tam, I hope you have a pleasant night. And thank you again. Oh, almost forgot. And he oh. tosses a pouch to you. Oh, thank you. Within is 42 okay. gold pieces. Amazing. Ah, uh, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. 
Good night. Cam is very tired. Yes. So, <laughs> I assume you are going to sleep. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the plan. Yes. I'm going okay. To sleep. He really wanted to go like play his song for Sagona, but he's too sleepy and he wants to do it well. Yeah, that's fair. Go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw as you go to sleep. What? Yeah. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's pretty good. 21. Oh, yeah, it is. Don't worry about it. Uh, you go to sleep uh, comfortably. You awaken. It's not as early as it was, uh, I assume. You do get to remove the exhaustion point. So, what is your plan? Um, well, let's see. He, let me hit the long rest button. Um, he is serious about going to, he, he does want to go, like, check in on Zurich, but he figures that there's not going to be as many people, like, literally in the morning. Yeah. Um, so, uh, he has two goals for today. One is to maybe maybe spar with Nore, and the other is to find Sagona so he can sing her the song. I think... Oh, shoot. Hang on. Okay, everything is fine. I will deal with that in a second. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he wants to go... He, he wants to go find Sagona if she's awake on a Saturday. Yeah, uh, it's about 8 in the morning. You slept in a little bit, uh, just from how crazy your night was previously. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation. Okay. Oh, that's nothing. Four. He's not. He's not looking very hard. A four. Uh, you're kind of meandering. You're still a little tired. You're not really super alert. And as you're kind of walking about, uh, it's maybe like 20 minutes that you've just kind of been wandering the halls that you hear. Um... What is it we're doing? I'm just curious. Friend that I wrote the song for. Oh. Well, where would she likely be right now? Maybe at the tavern, but I don't know if it... It might be too early for the tavern, but, I mean, she's a dwarf, so maybe not. Have you... Uh, well, I know dwarves like to eat. Oh, yeah, we could check on um, breakfast first. You glance in the mess hall, you spot yeah. Sagona. You're very smart. Thanks. I've been around the block a few times. You know and, a lot of dwarves? Well, dwarves don't really change, do they? <laughs> They're stubborn about that. I think I think she would agree with that. Oh, don't tell her I said that. I won't. I'd hate won't. to get off on the wrong hand. <laughs> he will, he'll traipse in. To is plop down next to her. Hey, Sagona. Uh, she is like has like a muffin that she's just taking a bite of. She's just, hey. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Uh, hey, do you remember? Remember that sword that we found at the docks that one time? You mean the one with the creepy blue guy trying to sell it? He wasn't creepy. Was he? Was he creepy? Yeah, Tam, he was. I don't think he was creepy. Okay. Well, he, sold it. he sold it to me. Oh, you got it. All right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And well. it's a legendary sword, and it's really great, and his name is Soul Singer, and she talks to me. She actually helped me find you today. Sigourna blinks a few times, and she says, Wait. One more time from the top. What? She's so, it's legendary. Her name's Soul Singer? Uh-huh. Her name is Soul Singer. And she helped you find me. Uh, yeah, because she talks to me sometimes. She reaches up and she presses the palm of her hand to your forehead. Okay, you're not sick. Uh-uh. Okay. How do you know all this? Uh... Because, no, no question, I know you're smart, Tam, but... From what so, I remember, you don't know much about weapons and sh well, remember, shite. Remember you and me, we went to Tabernak and we got him a trolley cake, and Tabernak was like, yeah, this is legit, this checks out, because sometimes air gins are uh, are weird and uh, mercurial. 
I don't really remember that, but I believe you. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. And, and so then uh, I got it, and everybody in the bar classroom was like, Tam, you should be suspicious. So I was like, I'm a little bit suspicious. I'm going to, I went and talked to Tabernacle. And so then uh, I went and talked to Widget, and Widget said, it's not cursed, but probably the air, the, um, uh, the djinn is probably going to, like, talk to you at some point later in your life to be like, hello, I gave you this thing, and it was not very much money, and so now you probably owe me for that. And so that's, you know, maybe not great, but that's not happening tomorrow, so... All right, that's a problem for later time, I guess. Uh, it's a problem for later. Maybe later Tam will know how to deal with it better. I love that mentality. All right, it's not cursed. That's good to hear. It's not cursed, yes. Perfect. Well, and, could I see it? Yeah, you can. We'll take her, take her out. Show her. Uh, Sagona will take the sword, and you see Sagona's blonde eyebrows rise almost immediately, and she says, "Oh." Told you. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> wow. And you see Sagona blushes. Tim tilts his head. All right. She's good by my book. And Sagona will hand the sword back to you. That's I, a very pretty sword. Isn't it? Isn't she just? She'll, he'll say to Soul Singer in his head, What did you tell her that made her blush? Oh, a girl never kiss and tells. But he'll look at Sagona. She made you blush. What did she say? I didn't blush. Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent blush. You're full of shite. No, you absolutely. And she like she like folds her arms across her chest. <laughs> you hundred percent. Okay, you're good. Well, I'll okay. never tell. So uh -huh. deal with it. There's a lot of things you'll never tell me. Apparently, that's not true. I asked you before, how come you wanted to be a, a near cleric and you wouldn't tell me? That's very personal. We're best friends. And maybe one day I'll feel comfortable telling you, but today is not that day. Okay, okay. It's a long story, right? I'm sorry, bugger. Thank you. Hey, now, you were good in that fight, by the way. I know. So are you. Thanks. That was I, pretty... I, I, at the last minute there, that was pretty clutch. I'm not going to lie. Well, I didn't have anything I could do that I couldn't... I, I, you take my eyes and I can't do a lot. But I can still sing. That's all you need. And I think for Bard, it really is. Well, at least one as awesome as you are. <laughs> you see why I brought you with me. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got some um, interesting friends. Look at it this way. You were brave enough to fight things on your own, and you didn't hide behind me like Lorna did. <laughs> I yeah, give her a did. hard, I give her a hard time, but she's fine. You hide behind me too, and I'm not even very big. Have you seen Lorna? She's like five foot nothing. Yeah. And she's a half elf. Yeah, right. It's not like dwarven kind where we're all made of the hardest shit you can find. Their bone, fucking her bones are made of paper. You were wearing the uh, plate armor. You were wearing armor since you were little. That's right. <laughs> I was born a clattering. You think she thinks I'm stupid? No. Oi. Lorna's just... She's born a noble, right? Born a noble and raised by tutors. And anyone that's not raised by tutors, you know, it's not that she's means to be arrogant. She just maybe comes off that way sometimes. Okay. You get to know Milos. her. She's awful nice. I promise. Milos and I were kind of both like... It made me feel better. He also wasn't very good at spelling. And then Lorna seemed to be upset that we weren't good at spelling. I mean, she spent her whole life reading books, right? Yeah. She reminds me a little bit of my sister, but, like, if my sister didn't like me, you know? It's not this... Okay. Tam? Yeah? I mean this in the best way possible. 
You can come off as pretty strong. Yeah, I know. Not everyone takes so kindly to the high energy thing. I'm working on it. Also, we're all mercenaries here, right? Well, we're not contractors yet, but we are paid to fight things and investigate and do tasks. And people that come together and do these sorts of things, some of them don't have the best of histories. And so maybe it's you can't expect everyone to trust you right off the bat. I, yeah, okay. Did you trust me as soon as you met me? Yeah. She blinks several times and she says, No, that's dumb. No, you shouldn't do that. Don't trust, oh, don't trust anyone until well, you get to know them. Everyone is always telling me that. That's because most people are out for themselves. But you aren't. That's not true. <laughs> but if you meant me harm, you would do harm to me. There is a difference right? between meaning you harm and not meaning the best for you. Okay. I don't really get it. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to help people. It depends. Everyone always needs to be looking out for number one. That's the saying. Is you have to look out for yourself first. Sometimes people take that too far. Or sometimes they can't see how helping someone else could help them and only how it could hurt them. Okay. Well, I wrote you a song. What? You didn't have to do that. I'm a bard. It's what I do. Oh, well, I, uh, <laughs> you see Sagona looks a little flustered and she says, apparently, Cam is like, apparently that's not what made her blush, but that's interesting. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate, okay. Well, then I'm excited to hear it. Yeah, that's right. That's the response. Uh, Sagona looks at you and she says, when can I hear it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, here's the thing. It's for you, but also it's kind of for Nier, because, you know, you're, you're God, right? Um, right. So, do you, we, I can sing it to you here, but then other people might hear it, and that could be weird. Um, but we can go to the cleric classroom or some other place. I wouldn't mind I was, going to the shrines, if that's, okay. will make it easier. I was, I was kind of hoping that there would be a thunderstorm, but there's not, so that's okay. I, uh, yeah, the weather's been too clear lately for me, too. But one day... There will be a storm. We're in a port day. town, after all. Yeah, it's gonna happen. So the two of you go to the cleric classroom. Yep, we go to the cleric classroom. Okay. It is empty, as it is a Saturday. <laughs> uh, even Treat is not here. Uh, Tam will first touch the Shrine of the Fiddler and just kind of like bow his head and say, I picked my college. I'm pretty sure you know that. And I have a sword that reminds me to be a bard. So I'm working on it. Thanks for your help. You almost hear an echoing strum in the distance. Maybe it's your imagination, or maybe it is actually there. Sagona doesn't seem to notice. Tam is prepared to believe that all music is the fiddler talking to him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so then he will go to the near shrine. He'll do his little um, thunderclap thing uh, with thaumaturgy. Okay. And then he will look at Sagona and say, okay, so this is for you and also for Nier and I hope that you like it. You and me got lost sailing through the mist toward a deep red dawn. 
I was faltering in faith that I was built for this wide unknown horizon. Now our sail is getting full as the thunderheads begin to roll. So may the wind shake us and the rain remake us thunder in our feet. We are free with the shore behind us. May the storm remind us we were born to trust what is near to us. Billowed by our trials and buoyed by the swell, we're reforged anew. I never knew before a storm could be a shelter you can retreat into. What I thought had made me blind was just the gleam of lightning in my eye. May the wind shake us and the rain remake us thunder in our feet. We are free with the shore behind us. May the storm remind us we were born to trust what is near to us. We were born to trust what is near to us. You see, Sagona is very quiet as you sing and is very quiet for a long time after you finish. Tam will wait. A little anxious. She's looking at the shrine and then without saying anything she turns to you and pulls you into a hug. Aww. Tam hugs her back. Thank you. Yeah. You can't know how true that rang. Yeah? Yeah. Nears. The reason I'm alive. Um. I was sailing. That song reminded me of when I was sailing away from home with a thunderstorm behind my back. You see that she kind of like wipes her eye. Tam holds her a little tighter. Thanks. Thanks, Tam. You tell anybody I cried, I'll beat your ass. I would never, would never tell anybody, ever. You don't cry. Dumb night. Hey, I'm glad you're my friend. Best friend. Best friend. I you love said you it. very. Yeah. You said it. You can't take it back. Nope. Never. Would never, would never try. I love you too, Tom. You're a good guy. Yeah. You're a good dwarf. The best dwarf. <laughs> uh, and she, like, wipes her eyes again. And Thank as... For... Huh? Thank you for, um... In that fight, it was really scary. So, thanks for, uh, you know, pushing me out of the way a little bit. So I didn't get caught in the crossfire. Oh, I could never... I could never leave you to... I could never leave you to fall like that. I appreciate it. Thank you for the song. Um, yeah. All I want to say is, my family isn't exactly right for me either. Yeah? I'm no builder. Well and, then. Well, they weren't happy about that, so. 
you're just going to have to be a cleric that was always made to be a cleric, and I'm just going to have to be a bard that was always made to be a bard. She nods. And as you share this quiet moment in the cleric's room in front of Near Shrine, that is where we will end tonight's session. And call it. Yay! Well done. You made Zagona cry. <laughs> I uh, didn't know how uh, accurate it would be. Right on the nose. Amazing. Well done. Thank you for playing with me. I had a really good time. Uh, to all of you who are watching at home, we love you. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.